So one of Samsung's, in my opinion, best features when it comes to their smartphones and one of the biggest sellers, in my opinion, even though they don't really market it too much, has to be good lock now good lock the best way to think of it is it's an application that has a bunch of different modules which allows for a ton of customization a ton of functionality that you can add to your galaxy as long as good lock is in your area i am hearing that there's like an alternative to good lock um i'm not sure what what exactly it's called i'll try to see if i can do some research and find that but in today's video we're gonna cover good lock extensive this may be a long one guys so just bear with me but we're gonna go ahead and cover good lock in its entirety all right guys so here we are with good lock let's get right into it and before actually my bad shout out to the homie delvon man for the bringing up the smart widgets i completely forgot that this was a thing on samsung devices with uh the new one ui update you got your smart widgets i'm someone that loves basketball so being able to have access to that there instead of having to dedicate a full home screen to it because it doesn't fit on my other one it's just dope so shout out to the homie delvon just a little nugget for you guys there if you want to activate that but going ahead and getting right into good lock man you see we got a ton of modules here and this is only about half of it so i'm gonna go ahead and, and kind of dive right in i might have to you know kind of go over a few of them kind of quickly just because again there's a lot here so first we're gonna go ahead and start with lockstar now as you can see this is one i'm i kind of off and on use it but uh, what Lockstar allows you to do is completely customize your lock screen interface. So like if I come in here, you can see I can move my clock all the way down here, all of that stuff. So you're just looking at, you know, just granular control over your entire lock screen interface, man. So that is always really dope. I'm going to turn that brightness down just a little bit more. Oh, it's a little bit too dark. There we go. There we go. Just that way it's not blinding you guys when I go into menus. Next up, let's talk Quicks, uh, Quick, uh, Quick Star, ah, Quick Star. So this one I actually use quite a bit, but not for the purpose that everybody thinks. So with this, you can style your own uh, quick, quick kind of quick panel or notification panel. I don't use it in that regard. I actually use it for this visibility of indicator icons uh, slab. So. What I like to do personally is in this top section, if there's something that I don't need there, take for example, you'll see I have a disabled VPN. I know that I have a VPN active at all times because I have it active at all times for a reason. I don't need to see the indicator. I can get away with that or I can go ahead and, you know, turn that off. Same thing with the alarm. I know I have my alarm set. I don't need an indicator there. I can turn that off. You can turn off the volume. I know that I have my phone in vibrate mode all the time and you can come in and literally just remove as many of these things as you want and as you need to. So super dope customization on that end. Next, we'll go into clock settings. You'll see I have the show AM PM option here in the top left turn on. I like the AM PM option. It doesn't give me any more functionality. I just like it. You can hide your clock. You can move your clock over here to the right to make your left uh, clear for notifications. I personally leave it on the on the left there. Um, you also, like I said, get a ton of other op or not ton, but you get three other um, options here. You can open your quick panel directly. So you can see I have it set to 50 50. So if I swipe from here, it it gives me the normal view that you're used to if i swipe from here it brings it all the way down so again super dope customization right there go ahead and head back next up we're gonna talk multi-star which this one is a really underrated one and a really good one if you don't know so on foldables it's gonna look a little bit different because you have a whole nother option for foldables if you guys want to see some of those options just let me know i have to do kind of a whole separate video on that but we'll go ahead and head in here so you'll see high resolution for external displays absolutely always turn that on run as many apps as possible always turn that on and then you can also have auto open last app open the last app you were using automatically when you start dex so that's just going to make your flow into samsung dex far more seamless and it's just like i said it's going to flow so turn those on i always do uh, this feature here you can only use if you're using the buttons uh, you just press and hold the uh, recents key and it'll automatically launch into multi-window so that's good if you use the buttons multi-window zoom 
is another one that that's kind of weird so if you turn that on and you do a quick settings uh panel what it'll do is it'll actually minimize the zoom of whatever content you have in both the panels so you can see more on the screen i find it it just makes it a bit too small for my eyes so i generally will leave that off multi-focus is dope it's exactly as it sounds so when you have applications in split view that normally would stop whenever you go to your your bottom app or, or the opposite you know application in split view it will no longer do that so if i'm watching anime and crunchy roll and i tap to scroll twitter it won't stop the video on the top anymore super dope um, also remove blur effect on adjusting split view so when you're adjusting the windows you'll have like a blur if you turn that on it'll remove that and it just makes it feel a little bit more responsive in my opinion so absolutely love that feature there next up we got pop-up view action so what this actually does is it creates these little hit points if i could grab the you can see like those hit points in the top right and left now when i go to grab on one you'll see oh it's kind of bringing out the there you go so when i grab one it'll actually turn this into a floating window just from dragging down one of those corners i'll go ahead and bring that back up so generally i, I leave that off i can do it through the uh the recents so i don't normally have an issue there so i'd normally just leave that off so that because i'm going to use this for notification panel anyway so that's good prevent pop-up view min uh, minimization you already know you won't be able to minimize it i like being able to minimize those and move those like the bubbles or whatever so i always personally leave that off now these next three are actually in the um advanced features labs uh, area so i'll go ahead and hit this first one and what this is is multi-window for all apps so you have some app developers cough cough instagram who don't like to optimize their applications for anything but the full view of your smartphone well some of us are more you know productivity focused users and we want to be able to do multiple things at once maybe i want to watch a youtube video and scroll instagram at the same time well if you do multi-window for all apps you're obviously going to be able to do that because again uh, all applications will be forced to work in multi-window full screen and split view is literally just you lose the status bar and it'll kind of stretch that top app all the way i normally don't like that just because then you gotta swipe down to bring your status bar and then you can actually do your gestures so i, I personally leave that off me personally moving right along immersive mode is what i just said uh, app stretch to camera hole this is just changing the aspect ratios of apps you can do that on a per app basis as well so that's multi-star navstar i don't use so i'll kind of just gloss over it but you can actually customize your buttons here and you can also customize your um your gesture handle for like if you're using gesture hints i don't so i don't use this one in particular uh, next you got home up which i do use this one pretty extensively so we'll go to the first option you'll see home screen grid you can have a custom set of exactly what you want in terms of your home screen grid you can do the same with the apps and you can do the same with the favorites max count loop pages is when you get to that very last home screen you can swipe again and it'll take you to your first page i normally leave that off because i only rock two home screen pages anyway so no big deal um apps list is pretty dope you can change your um view from in here i'll show you guys you had to see how to refresh but you change your view to be able to scroll horizontally the main reason i don't use this is just because i don't like the priority apps area i don't like that if i could take that off i would use the horizontal no problem at all so I'll turn that off hit okay finder access just deal specifically with that universal search so you're good there uh, background blur control what this does is you can remove pretty much all of the blur from all your samsung animations what i normally find is that you run into not performance issues but the device doesn't feel as fluid and as responsive when you have all of that blur so i literally take this down to zero percent and you'll see here set to zero percent to improve device performance so you can go ahead and do that if you choose if you like all the blur then you can obviously keep it i'm still not sure about background color control what that does exactly i haven't been able to figure that out uh hide app icon label this essentially just hides the text underneath your folders and apps on the home screen i like mine so i leave it there folders you get a cool little pop-up folder uh option here so when you click on a folder it'll be this pop-up view instead of the normal one that we're used to from samsung i don't mind the samsung full immersive folders uh, i'll i leave those on 
you can change the icons the three by three as far as what it'll show the folder screen when you open your folder you can change that there as well so super dope there um we already did that back up and restore is exactly as it sounds you can back up and restore home screen layouts kind of like in nova or some of those other launcher apps and i got a notification there thought i put it on do not disturb but there we go uh so like i said pretty much just like just like other launchers where you can save your kind of home screen layout or whatever the case may be so Good to go there. Um, Share Manager just allows you to have more, you know, kind of granular and fine-tuned control of your Share Manager screen. Like you can set certain apps to be pinned, so when you do your Share screen, they'll always show up first. Stuff like that. Task Changer is another cool one. That's how I have this cool Recents menu where you can see essentially six apps versus if I change it to the normal default you know, one application. So I, I personally always do grid. I like to see more apps on that recent screen. Mini mode just makes them super small, really dope for one handed usage. I don't care about using one hand cause I'm, this is a big device. I'm using it with two hands most of the time anyway. App labels, we'll take out the little text at the top. Search bar, I turn that off, it's a search bar there. And then recommended apps are these here. I always turn those, turn that off as well. I just like it to look as clean as, as possible, so. I turn those off. Here are some extra gesture settings. So the gestures using the, the, the gesture handle are where you would get these. So if you turn this on, whether you have that gesture hint hidden or not, you'll still be able to use those like swipe between different apps and all that stuff. I normally keep this off because Samsung's implementation of that is just not as smooth and fluid as it is on the iPhone or on the Pixel. So I, I just keep that turned off for the most part. Uh, full screen mode, if you're in, say, an application that puts you in immersive mode where you got to swipe down to bring in your status bar, then swipe again to do a gesture, you turn that on, it overrides that completely. I personally like having that. Um, allow recent gestures in the pay region. So if you have that Samsung Pay shortcut set up on your home screen where you swipe up and it brings in your card for you to authenticate, uh, your gestures will, well, that won't get in the way of your gestures anymore. Your gestures will take priority. Uh, gesture top priority setting pretty much what this does is it just enables any application like say for example if you're in an app and you're like scrolling or something like that and you're trying to actually activate a gesture your gestures will take priority over you scrolling or whatever the case may be uh, bottom gesture sensitivity setting I always turn that on and I max it out that way I don't have like I don't feel like I have to be so direct when I'm actually trying to you know do my gestures or whatever the case may be so personally always leave that one on so we'll swipe back we went through those that is home up nice shot is another one I've kind of been playing with but haven't really been using much this pretty much allows you to customize some of your options whenever you're doing screenshots and whenever you're doing screen, you know, the screen recording or the screen recorder option. So you could do like do not disturb when you're doing screen recording, which I think that I'm going to turn that on. But well, I'll turn it on later when I go into the settings, but that actually sounds pretty useful. So super dope, but that's a nice shot. Routines Plus just gives you some extra uh, features in Bixby routine. So again, for the sake of time, I'm not gonna go, like I said, all in, but you can see you get a lot more fine tuned control over uh, Bixby routines whenever you have that. Here's two that I don't use, uh, so I don't know exactly what options are in there, but clock face is a cool one. I've seen some people with some pretty cool always on display clocks. You get those um, or extra ones from here. Notification star allows you to customize how your notifications look on your panel, all of that kind of stuff. And that's the unit side of good lock. Now we're gonna switch to the family side, which has a whole nother set of toggles, right? I only really use these three, but I'll kind of just touch on these really quickly. So edge touch is pretty much, I, I've seen a lot of people uh, like this one. What it does is you can set boundaries for those accidental touches since the screen is curved. Accidental touches are normally a thing. You can turn that on and that'll help with that. Nice catch is if you ever feel like you get, it's like if you ever feel as though you're getting like phantom vibrations or anything like that, you use that. Wonderland, you can create like these special kind of parallax view wallpapers with that. So that that's kind of fun. Never used it personally. Uh, Pentastic allows you to customize your S Pen screen. So this screen here, you can customize that using Pentastic. Uh, Keys Cafe is pretty much a theming uh, app for the Samsung default keyboard. I use Gboard, so I never use that. Now to get into the ones that I actually do use. So theme park 
is essentially just a, a more powerful theming engine for Samsung phones. So themes, just a normal one, you're pretty, if you do just a normal theme, you're gonna be covering all of these aspects, keyboard, quick panel, icon, and volume panel, or you can do like me and just customize specific things. So I like the circle icons, so I made a theme specifically for circle icons. You can do your volume panel, your quick panel. You can see I have the color one there, which it's currently not on. I'll turn that on later. And then keyboard, again, you can set custom themes and things specifically for your keyboard. So a lot of customization there in terms of how the device looks. One-handed operation is gonna be on the functional side, right? This is one of my favorites too. So for those that don't know, I personally use when it comes to the navigation uh, bar, I use, instead of using this one, which is what a lot of people are used to, where you have like your normal Android default gestures, I use this one, which is the three different swipes. So if I swipe right, I go back. If I swipe here, it gives me my recent. And if I swipe in the middle, it takes me home. Same thing as using the buttons when you're used to using Samsung gestures. Well, if you notice, there's no options for the sides to get the back gestures. I still really do like those, but I'm still able to do it. The reason why I'm able to do it is one hand operations plus. When you turn that on, you get a left handle and a right handle. And even with these, you can take that customization even further because you can use the long swipe. So what you'll see is if I swipe long, it brings up my recents menu. If I swipe short, it goes back. You can do this on either side. You can set diagonals and you can set diagonals for the long swipe as well. So a lot of functionality here. I'm pretty basic when it comes to this particular um, module. But like I said, I, I mainly use it to get the uh, swipes back and then to do that recent option there. So that's pretty much what I, what I use it for. So go ahead and go back and go back into good lock. Next up, and finally, this is probably one of my favorites on here. The easiest way to explain Sound Assistant is it, is it pretty much lets you control your volume panel. So think of this how you have the volume mixer on Windows. So if you're, say, for example, running Spotify and you're running a game, you can control the volume of those two applications independently of each other. Well, you can do the same exact thing on your Samsung smartphone. So if I bring up, let me see. If I bring up YouTube and I got one of my videos here, go ahead and hit play on that. I have it muted. Obviously I'm not gonna copyright myself, but we have it muted. Um, and then I click here, you can see the actual application, you know, gets controlled there. And I'll go ahead and turn this up. And you can hear, absolutely in. I can control this application's volume independently of the rest of the system. So say for example, if I was running YouTube and playing a game, the game would pop up, you know, right next to this and I could say, boost up the volume for YouTube and turn down the volume for the game. All in one place. It literally reminds me of the volume mixer on um, Windows computers super dope feature super underrated and there's a ton of other functionality and customization here along with that as well but again like i said i mainly use it for that specific um i mainly use it for that specific option but again ton of different options and stuff to go through here that's just like i said a bird's eye view of good luck guys but i'm telling you if this is offered in your region you owe it to yourself to download this application and really play around with these modules. You can set up a ton of customization and a ton of functionality when it comes to your Galaxy device. It is absolutely fantastic. And if I was to say there's any, you know, single reason why I like Samsung devices, Good Lock would have to be that candidate. You can do so much when it comes to Good Lock, guys, but that's Good Lock in a nutshell. If I missed anything, you, you like I said, you guys wanna see me cover anything, you know, a little bit more extensive, definitely let me know. But that's, like I said, just a bird's eye view of Good Lock. So that's Good Lock on your, you know, normal Samsung slab phone. Now, I wanna know in the comment section, did you feel as though I missed any modules or any features, anything that you think that would benefit my workflow? If so, drop me a comment down below and let me know about it. I'm always happy to try out new features in Good Lock, but that's gonna do it for the video today, guys. As always, this is Ike's Tech Talk. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace.